Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? It is a delight to be with you once again here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. And perhaps this may be your very first time to be tuning into our broadcast. To you, I say a very special welcome. And right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ruth, the last chapter of Ruth, chapter four. If it's possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. Ruth, chapter four. I'm going to begin to read at verse 13 here in just a moment. And as we go through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our English gospel tracks. My announcer has already told you that Bible Track Echoes is the radio arm of Bible Tracks Incorporated. He's going to come back on at the end of the broadcast and give you three ways by which you can contact us, giving us your name and your address. And if you'll do that, that free sample packet of tracks, 40 different gospel tracks are in it, that free sample packet will be on its way. I'm going to highlight one of the tracks here in just just a moment, but I need to lead into our broadcast this way. Every once in a while, when you go through a book of the Bible in a verse-by-verse format, you are confronted with a verse that speaks directly into a modern-day moral issue, and that's where we find ourselves here in Ruth chapter 4. Now, you watch the evening news as I do, and uh, there's just a whole lot of issues that we are confronted with, that we hear about them almost daily, things like immigration, legal and illegal, a border security, how we're going to do that, the truthfulness of witnesses, whether we're seeing false reports of crime or false reporting by the news media. Then there are issues of abortion and gender identity, and the list could go on. Well, guess what? One of these issues is going to come into view as we look into Ruth chapter 4. You know that if we are followers of Jesus Christ, then we must bring every thought into captivity under the obedience of Christ. Or to put it this way, every child of God must give up their personal opinions on moral issues and take Jesus's opinion as their own because Jesus is our moral compass, not society. So get your Bible. Jesus is about ready to set our moral compass. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago. By the way, the word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's a reference. It's a word describing an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And gospel tracts are the tool that God is using all over the world in your country, no matter what country you're listening in, I'll guarantee you people are coming to Christ through gospel tracts. And I want to give you some. This one is entitled, When You Meet God. When You Meet God. I know there's some people that that say that they are atheists, and most people that do really are not. They just don't know what's out there, and they don't want to get into the discussion. But the Bible says, and you know in your heart, everybody seems to know in their heart because God has put eternity into the hearts of people. We all know that we're going to die and face a judgment time. Well, this gospel tract, When You Meet God, helps us be clear about what does the Bible say about man? What does the Bible say about the forgiveness of sins? It does say in this tract that we will face God. He will be the judge. And to be to be able to enter into heaven, we must meet his criteria, not our own. When you meet God. God. It's a great tool. I want to give it to you. It's just one of the 40 tracks in the sample packet. Have pen and paper ready when my announcer gives our contact information, or you can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. 
If your Bible is open to the book of Ruth, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 say this, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in under her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Stop, please, right there. With verse 13, we step now into the second section here of chapter 4. I called verses 1 through 12 with this title, A Redeemer Sought. A Redeemer is Sought. But now, verses 13 to 17, I've titled, A Rest Secured. A Rest Secured. Perhaps you were not part of our study of Ruth earlier on. Back in chapter 1, that chapter opens with the death and the damage of some women. Three widows are found there. Naomi, the mother-in-law of the other two widows, she urges in chapter 1 her two daughter-in-laws who are widows now, she urges them to return to the house of their parents and hopefully they can find a new husband. And urging them to go home, Naomi says that she has no future to offer them. She says in chapter 1, verse 11, she has no more sons in her womb to give them. She cannot provide hope for their long-term rest. Back in chapter 1, and verse 9, Naomi hopes that these two young widows will find rest. Now, that word rest, it's, that's the word is actually used there in chapter 1. But then in chapter 3, Naomi gives Ruth advice on how to respond to the romantic advances of Boaz. And the advice here is designed to help find rest for Ruth. The word is used there in chapter 3 and verse 1. It uses the word rest, which is a reference to a long-term hope and future by Ruth having a family and having children children. Now, though, in chapter 4, Boaz, he's able now to marry Ruth. She gets pregnant, and when the baby is born, the women of the town of Bethlehem begin to bless Naomi. But but why her? Well, because now rest, long-term hope, a long-term future of, of joy and delight has come to Naomi's life and to Ruth. I'm going to be using a series of words for my outline for verses 13 to 17. All these words will begin with the letter W, like in the word work. Are you ready? First of all, verse 13, my title for verse 13 is this, blessing the womb, blessing the womb. The word womb is my title word here. Notice the words of verse 13 carefully. It says, the Lord gave her, that is Ruth, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. Now, just in case you've been living under a rock somewhere over the last months, you need to know that this whole matter of conception and children in the womb has been a high profile topic in the news. I'm not so naive to think that all who are listening to this study are going to agree with me on all issues, and that may include abortion. What none of us dare to be naive about is to think that God has not spoken about children in the womb. So let me make some points here. Are you ready? Point number one, based upon here, verse 13, the word conception. Conception is the work of God. Listen to me. Conception is the work of of God. The verse again says, God gave her conception. Now, you can play games all you want with those words, but they say exactly what they say. God is the worker of conception. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, lo, that word lo means to look. See this. Don't miss this. Lo, look, children are the inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now, I believe this is true of all children born to all people, no matter the era in which they live, the culture in which they live, the nationality they find themselves, or listen, or the spiritual condition of the people having the children. God says children are his reward. That's point number one. The conception is the work of God. Point number two is this. Children in the womb are the working of God are the working of God. 
Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16, have some pretty clear statements about the whole idea of what God thinks about a child in the womb. Some key phrases from Psalm 139 come from verse 13, which says this, God possessed my reins. That's how verse 13 begins. God possessed my reins. Now, those words may not be all that clear to us today as they were at one time. So let me tell you what that means. It means that God possessed or God formed or God gave me, that is the person being talking about here, God gave to us our reins. That word reins means our inner parts. Where did we get our inner parts from? They came from God. God formed us. But Psalm 139 verse 13 goes on to say, God has covered me in my mother's womb. Again, for clarity's sake, let me put it in some up-to-date language. God covered, that Hebrew word being translated covered there means he joined me together while I was in my mother's womb. Some people refer to this as God knit me together. That's a pretty good way of phrasing it. It's these phrases and some others here from Psalm 139 that caused me to say that not only is conception a work of God, but children while they are in the womb are a working of God. God is working on them. Now listen, friend, this verse is talking directly to a moral issue that is just causing a all kinds of furor in my country and maybe yours too. Let me make a third point here. Children are worded by God while in the womb. Now listen, I said conception is the work of God. I said children in the womb are the working of God, but now I'm saying that children are, are worded by God. What do I mean by that? I mean this, God calls babies in the womb children. He calls them by using clear terms, terms that are only used of people, of persons. Children in the womb are people, according to God, valuable gifts of God. Again, you may not agree with me on all my political views or I, you, and that's okay. That's what makes the world go round. But you cannot look past how God describes babies that are in the womb in his Bible. Now, you and I who say that we are followers of Christ, we must bring every thought into captivity. It includes our thoughts about the moral issue of babies in the womb, where they come from, how we describe them, what we call them, and we must bring our thoughts into captivity to agree with Jesus. We can't say that we're going to be followers of Jesus and then push aside his moral view on one of the most critical issues of our day. You and I have to love babies. Perhaps you're listening and you have aborted a baby. I have great news for you. God loves you. God loves that aborted baby. God will give you peace in this if you seek his face and heart through his word with all your heart. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.